Opioid agonists are medications used mainly to control acute or chronic pain, in particular situations. Some of them are also used to treat diarrhea and cough. When treating pain, the goal should be to use short-acting opioids at the lowest effective dose for just a few days, and slowly increase their dose only as needed. As a class, opioids share one thing in common. They bind to opioid receptors in the brain, spinal cord, and gastrointestinal tract. Some are endogenous, meaning they are produced naturally by the body, like endorphin, short for endogenous morphine. But others are exogenous, meaning they come from outside the body, like heroin and morphine, which come from the opium poppy, a flowering plant that oozes a milky white liquid. To understand how opioids work, Let's zoom in to a region of the brain tissue that has opioid receptors. Normally, in the absence of endorphins, inhibitory neurons secrete a neurotransmitter called gamma-aminobutyric acid, or GABA, that prevents nearby neurons from releasing neurotransmitters like dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. Now let's say someone goes to play a rigorous game of badminton. Exercise releases endorphins, which activate the three major opioid receptors located in the inhibitory neurons called the mu, kappa, and delta receptors. As endorphins bind to these receptors, they block the inhibitory neuron from releasing GABA, allowing the dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine-secreting neurons to freely unload their neurotransmitters, which then get picked up by another neuron in the same area. Norepinephrine and serotonin release takes place in pain processing regions of the brain, like the thalamus, brainstem, and spinal cord, resulting in a decreased sensitivity to pain. When dopamine release takes place in reward pathway regions, like the ventral tegmental area, nucleus accumbens, and prefrontal cortex, the result is a calming sensation that feels really good. Okay, so even though all opioids bind to opioid receptors, not all of them have the same effect. Some opioids, like morphine, just act like endorphin, and when they bind to the opioid receptors, they trigger a full response that results in the complete inhibition of GABA release. These are called full agonists. Others, like tramadol, have a weaker effect since they only partially inhibit GABA release. These opioids are called partial agonists. Now some opioids act preferably on the mu receptors, others on kappa or delta receptors. In fact, they can have an agonist effect on one receptor and an antagonist effect on others. These are called mixed agonist antagonists. First, let's look at some full agonists. Commonly used medications in this class include morphine, methadone, fentanyl, meperidine, codeine, hydrocodone, and oxycodone. Although not a medication, heroin is also a full agonist. Since opioids are the strongest analgesics available, they can typically be given perorally, intravenously, or through patches in the case of fentanyl to control pain that couldn't be eased with non-opioid medications. Fentanyl is the most potent full agonist, and it's also used as an anesthetic medication due to its rapid onset and short duration of action. Meperidine can be used to relax uterine muscles and inhibit contractions during labor. However, it can produce respiratory depression in the baby. Codeine is a weaker full agonist and is often taken perorally with other analgesics like acetaminophen to treat moderate pain like headaches. Due to an unknown mechanism, codeine and hydrocodone are also useful as an antitussive to relieve cough in adults. Unfortunately, opioids have a high risk of causing opioid dependence. Since they cause a wonderful euphoric feeling, there's an increased risk of abuse and addiction. Methadone is an opioid that does not cause euphoria and has a long half-life, so it's often given to decrease withdrawal symptoms for people with opioid use disorder or heroin addiction. An added benefit is that it also blocks the euphoric feeling that comes from taking other opioids, so it helps to prevent future abuse. There are also some opioids that don't have any analgesic effects. For example, dextromethorphan is only used for its antitussive properties. Loperamide can't cross the blood-brain barrier, so it's used to reduce the motility of the gastrointestinal tract and treat diarrhea. Now, common partial agonists include buprenorphine, butorphanol, pentazacine, and tramadol. The first three are mixed agonist antagonists. Buprenorphine is a partial agonist at the mu receptor, but an antagonist at the kappa receptor, while butorphanol is a partial agonist at the kappa receptor, but an antagonist at the mu receptor. Pentazacine is a partial agonist at the mu receptor and kappa receptor. All three can be used to manage moderate pain. 
Tramadol is a partial agonist of the mu receptor and is used for moderate to severe pains, often after surgery. Now, if these medications are given with a full agonist, they'll compete for the same receptors and decrease the overall effect. Now, this could be a good thing. As a partial agonist, buprenorphine can stimulate opioid receptors enough to decrease cravings and withdrawal symptoms in people with opioid use disorders. However, it's not potent enough to cause an overdose or trigger the euphoric feeling, which makes it a safer alternative to methadone. Okay, let's move on to some side effects. In the central nervous system, excessive stimulation of opioid receptors can cause euphoria, but sometimes also dysphoria when the person feels unhappy and dissatisfied. Stimulation of opioid receptors in the GI tract cause a decrease in motility and constipation, but they increase motility in the biliary tract, which worsens the pain during biliary colic. Other side effects include pinpoint pupils or pupillary constriction, flushing, and nausea. Now, an opioid overdose is very dangerous. First, there's cardiac and central nervous system depression, which could lead to arrhythmias and coma. Since the CNS depression is additive with depressants like alcohol and other medications like barbiturates, they should never be used together. The most common cause of death from opioid use is respiratory depression due to decreased activity in the medulla, the part of the brain that regulates breathing. This causes increased carbon dioxide retention, so it accumulates and causes dilation of blood vessels, including those in the brain. Cerebral vasodilation increases intracranial pressure, which is why opioids are also contraindicated in patients with head injury, since they are already more susceptible to increased intracranial pressure. Opioids should be avoided whenever possible during pregnancy, because they can cause dependence in the baby. Finally, if a chronic user of opioids stops treatment, they could experience withdrawal symptoms like anxiety, agitation, confusion, sweating, and the feeling of skin crawling. The good news is that over time, an individual can safely taper off their use of opioid treatments altogether. Severe withdrawal symptoms can be managed with methadone and buprenorphine combined with naloxone. Now, we want to make a simple and fun mnemonic that'll help you efficiently memorize and retain all these pharmacology facts. Let's start with a small garden full of poppy plants. The left side is full of fully grown poppies representing full agonists, while the right half contains half-grown plants representing partial agonists. So on the left side of the scene, we'll put a mighty morphine punching ranger fighting a giant roadrunner going, meep meep, and an ox with a fur coat. They're definitely going to need analgesics after their fight, which is good since they represent morphine, meperidine, and oxycodone. Now, they're disrupting a programmer writing code for codeine. His computer is cooled by a water cooler that represents hydrocodone. This programmer is clearing his throat loudly at the obnoxious brawlers to help you remember that both these medications can also be used to treat coughing. Next, let's have a mastodon, representing methadone, hanging up anti-drug posters, since it can treat opioid use disorder. Finally, there's a wizard from a fantasy novel, representing fentanyl. He's sleeping soundly, which will help you remember it's sometimes used as an anesthetic. Okay, moving on to the other side for the partial agonists. We have a burping orphan, hanging up anti-drug posters, representing buprenorphine to treat opioid use disorder. His brother is wearing a butterfly costume for butorphanol. They are standing inside a pentagram representing pentazosine. Buprenorphine is standing at one point of the star with a mu symbol, since it's a partial agonist here. At the opposite point with a kappa symbol is butorphanol, since he's a partial agonist for that receptor. Since the pentagram contains both mu and kappa, it's a partial agonist for both receptors. They are standing near a tram track representing tramadol, and if the tram hits them, they're both going to need analgesics. All right, let's go over some of the side effects. We'll put these towards the bottom of the garden. Let's do the life-threatening side effects first. There's an ice cream vendor in the park. He's got three ice cubes that contain a brain, a heart, and a pair of lungs to represent CNS, cardiovascular, and respiratory depression. The one with the lungs is crushing an unfrozen brain, which represents increased intracranial pressure. Remember that opioids are contraindicated after head trauma like when it gets crushed by a large block of ice. Next, let's go over some less severe side effects. First, we have the park's famous statue of a man sitting on the toilet called the Constipated Man. He's got a pin sticking out of his eye for pinpoint pupils, and his cheeks are red, representing flushing. This is very upsetting for a couple in the garden, representing dysphoria. 
The woman is pregnant to help you remember that opioids should be avoided, if possible, during pregnancy. And the husband is vomiting on a giant gallstone by the statue, which serves as a reminder that opioids cause nausea, and they are also contraindicated in people with biliary colic. Finally, at the foot of the statue, there are some empty beer bottles to help you remember that opioids should not be used with alcohol or other medications that cause sedation. All right, as a quick recap, opioids stop inhibitory neurons from releasing inhibitory neurotransmitters, which allows dopamine, norepinephrine, and serotonin to flood the thalamus, brainstem, and spinal cord, reducing the perception of pain. Opioids are classified as full agonists and partial agonists. Full agonists include morphine, fentanyl, meperidine, codeine, and methadone. They are more potent, but have more severe side effects. Partial agonists include buprenorphine, butorphanol, pentazacine, and tramadol. Opioids can cause side effects like nausea, vomiting, dysphoria, pinpoint pupils, constipation, biliary colic, and in the worst cases, coma, cardiac depression, and respiratory depression. But wait, there's more. Here's a mind map with all the mnemonics. Go ahead and pause the video so you can test yourself and see what you remember. Stay tuned for the answers after the credits.